Oh, you've come back to die with your city. Uh, you're confused, sir. Not sure why you're doing that. Uh, this is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Hatfield. And you are listening to Dune Steve, That Gets My Goat. This is a uh, different than usual, That Gets My Goat. Uh, we just, less than an hour ago, got out of our showing of Iron Man 3. And uh, we swung by the Wendy's, got something to eat, came back, and now we are discussing the movie. So we're we're actually sitting in my car. Usually when we do That Gets My Goat, we're at, around my kitchen table, the fancy microphone setup. But today we're instead using the Zoom H1, which we've used before. So it's kind of the, the same deal that we did last time when we were walking around my neighborhood with the Zoom. Today instead we are sitting in my car with the Zoom. And we're going to discuss our impressions of Iron Man. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes because we haven't, I mean, it was just a very short time ago. Usually we see the movie and then after a couple of days or so we get together and we discuss it. And I guess that gives you a little time to process it or think of something to say or whatever. We may have absolutely nothing or maybe we'll just go on and on. I guess we'll see. It all depends. It kind of tends to be a little organic like that. That's true. Usually I'll have something to tell you like, oh, it did X number of dollars or, oh, it was a huge opening, you know, or that kind of thing. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a huge opening. It just opened today. And so they were saying that they they were thinking, wow, this is going to be as big as the Avengers. And I was just like, really? People are thinking it's going to be as big as the Avengers? And now that it's open, people are thinking, no, no, we, we never said that it would be as big as the Avengers, but it's it's really big. But it, it, it opened on the 3rd of May. Uh, so it sort of kicked off the summer movie season. And, and before we talk about Iron Man 3, I wondered, would you mind if we talked about what movies are coming out this summer that you really, really want to see, that maybe you'd want to see and do an episode about? Sure, we can do that. Uh, it's funny, that whole summer movie season. You know what movie it was that ruined the summer movie season and it no longer starts on Memorial Day, now starts the 1st of May? What movie was that? Oh, I don't know. It was Spider-Man. Spider-Man came out several weeks before what was it attack of the clones that year which was the memorial day release and spider-man kicked butt that year and so it's all spider-man's fault in case you're wondering now we'll have to see what movie eventually comes out in the middle of april and starts summer then uh in a few years i'm sure it's coming pretty soon it'll be all year round they'll just be like yeah it's the blockbuster season it starts on january 5th and it ends december 29th well, I've always wondered why they don't release big movies, you know, in March or September or something when there's no competition. But I've complained about it a million times. Hollywood has this mentality that people only go to the movies between May and July, and that's it. And so, uh, you know, you get big bombs like Titanic and Avatar that come out in December. So Yeah, that's that. Uh, it seems like they do have a slight, hey, you'll get something good for the holiday season thing. The holiday release is kind of a little something uh, that they go after. Even you get some movies that'll come out those times. But yeah, I, I, it seems like there's a little bit of them uh, trying to branch out. Movies that they think were going to be big, they're skipping the summer with them and, and, and moving them to... what You know, it's like the G.I. Joe movie that just came out. That was supposed to be a summer movie last year, right? And yeah. they bumped it all the way until March. March or whenever it was that it came out. And I think the movie that broke that barrier was probably the um, Alice in Wonderland one, right? Yeah, that thing is still making money, and uh, they're still making movies like Alice in Wonderland. Darn it. Yeah, yeah, they're hoping to uh, strike gold twice or, or whatever. Strike lightning to strike twice? Yeah, we've got... Sorry, I just ate some ice. We've got some of these live-action fairy tales i'm sorry ma'am. <laughs> it's okay i put your cup all the way over there and you can no longer chew ice while we're talking it's like you were saying the other day we were saying should we record while we we're doing something you're like oh i don't think i could resist the temptation to eat while i was talking <laughs> and here we are <laughs> right we were gonna go out for pizza and record an episode while we were eating and i was just afraid that yeah, I, I have very little control, so I would probably start to say something, then stuff my mouth and keep talking, and it would be impossible to edit out. But yeah, right now we're in this the midst of children's fairy tales being 
reimagined as action movies. And so we have Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, and we have Jack and the, the Giant Slayer, and uh, the Snow White and the Huntsman, and Maleficent is coming out, and they've just announced they're doing a live action Cinderella where Kate Blanchett plays the evil stepmother. I don't know. I don't get excited about them. They rarely work. I liked Snow White and the Huntsman, but I think that was lowered expectations for me. You know, the the word of mouth was, oh, this one's bad and it looks bad and everybody hates Kristen Stewart and she can't smile. And so I went and I was like, you know, I, I liked that. That sometimes helps. Yeah, I don't know what it is about them, but they don't. I, I never even saw that Alice in Wonderland movie that started it all off. I did see a little bit of it, but I had to leave. I, I think I may have even been going to meet you to see a different movie and my kids uh, and my wife had rented it. And so I saw like the first 20 minutes or so. And then um, I had to go. That happened with a couple other movies too. I think the same thing happened with Despicable Me. I've never seen that one because I was, I saw the first half and then I was like, Oh, I got to go. And so I never saw the end, but yeah, those movies don't excite me too much for some reason. I'm not sure why I was kind of slightly interested and Jack the Giant Slayer, just because there's like a, a Jack and the Beanstalk thing. I, I guess my only Jack and the Beanstalk experience is with Mickey and the Beanstalk, really, when it comes down to it. Then uh, my kids, uh, my daughter really likes these books that are called the Sisters Grimm, I think they're called. And they're they're basically supposedly the descendants of the Grimm brothers. And they live in this town that's... You know, all the fairy tale people from all the stories that you know, they emigrated from Europe and they've all holed up in some town in like upstate New York or something. I can't remember where it is exactly that it's located, but and so they have all these crazy fairy tale adventures. But in the first one that I was reading to the kids uh, when they would go to bed, uh, the Jack, the giant slayer was kind of a big deal in it. And it involved the giants and stuff like that. And I was thinking, I don't really know Jack is the giant slayer, except for I guess there's the one giant, but... Well, aren't those two different Jacks? There's Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk, but Jack the giant slayer is like, hey, I killed seven with one blow. And everybody goes, oh, seven giants? I don't know. Are they completely separate people then? I thought they were. I'll bet they aren't in the Brian Singer movie, but... You know, there there was always Jack and Jill and Jack Spratt and Jack, he could he could Jack eat no fat. Apple. Jack be quick. Jack jumped over a candlestick. There's a lot of Jacks. Yeah, there's pretty much a Jack of all trades, really. That's right. Jack Nicholson and the Beanstalk. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, uh, what movies are we interested in this year that maybe we should do? We should maybe we should open that up for a poll too. We could have uh, listeners say, "Hey, I want you guys to do gets my goat about this movie or that movie," and uh, I guess you could just put that in the comments or in the forum and we can weigh your suggestions and then just do what we want anyways. But uh, yeah, I don't know. You you asked me to take a look or you asked me what movies I'm excited about this summer. And uh, the sad thing is I wasn't even sure. And I'm still fairly confused about what's coming out soon. Like Thor 2, I thought was next summer. You cleared me up. It's actually November, November holiday time that uh, that movie is going to be coming out. So I guess that one doesn't count count for our list here because we're talking about summer movies. Sadly, I had to I had to get on the internet and open up a website to tell me just what is out there. And of course, whenever you do that, they tell you everything that's coming, and so you have to skim through this giant list to see the movies that are actually big enough, wide enough releases that I'm even going to see them at. My local multiplex, Lilo Dallas Multipass. Uh, I was trying to decide which movies that I'm really excited about. There's some that look like they could be good, but I'm so disconnected with the commercials and the, the hype that you get. I don't watch much TV. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure where else you would come across the things that would hype you up. I don't watch Entertainment Tonight or whatever. <laughs> People seem to post trailers on Facebook all the time. A lot of time, well, almost always, it's the internet for me. You know, I, I go see a lot of movies, but there's only three trailers or five trailers, and, uh, you know, there's 20 movies coming out. Yeah, that's probably partly my problem, too, is that I just don't go to see a lot of movies. I know I'm not going to get out to see the movies, and so I guess I don't get as excited about them as I would 
you know, 10, 15 years ago when I did get out to see a lot of movies and I thought, oh yeah, I'll see that. Maybe I won't see it in the first run theater, but I'll at least see it, you know, in the dollar theater or whatever. And I did an awful lot of that, but now it's, maybe it's because I'm old. I don't know what it is, but I'm uh, set in my ways and it seems like all the movies that I'm excited about or at least interested in, I figure I probably will see are all, you know, it's like, okay, my top movies coming up for this summer, I, Iron Man had to be one of them. Super or Man of Steel, I would say, is one of them. Normally, I would say the Pixar film, but I don't even know if I'm excited about that this year because it's just Monsters Incorporated sequel, which, while I loved Monsters Incorporated, I don't know that I want to see sequels from Pixar. There's also the Despicable Me 2 coming out this year, which is what you expect from DreamWorks, but... I hate to see Pixar emulating DreamWorks instead of the other way around. It just, it frustrates me. Pixar was always the one that came up with the really cool, the good idea, the the something that's really interesting and fun to see. And DreamWorks had like the cheesy parody of whatever. And uh, I don't know, maybe it'll be so awesome and I'll be eating my words, but I'm not even all that excited about that. Um... What else is coming out this summer? There was one or two others that I was thinking would be probably pretty good. The Wolverine one, that's this summer, right? Mm -hmm. That one looks like it could be a pretty good movie. It looks like it'll definitely be a step up from, I think, the last one, which, while I didn't hate it, it wasn't one that I was writing home about either. Okay. Is there anything, uh, any other movie? Well, I'll let you talk for a while about ones that you're looking forward to, and maybe that'll strike some memories to me. Well, we just saw Iron Man 3, so it's not fair to list Iron Man 3, but yeah, it was the movie I was most looking forward to this summer. And it's like, okay, now that that's come and gone, I never need go to the movies again. But uh, not me, no. I uh, Often I enjoy the trailers more than the movies that they're preceding. <clears throat> I think tonight it was that once again. Um, but yeah, the three would be Iron Man, uh, Monsters University. I, I just... I love Monsters, Inc. and those characters, and I, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt for a prequel. Uh, and you know what? It could be a, a big disappointment, but uh, I hope not. I, uh, and then, I don't know, the, th- the third movie that I'm most looking forward to, it's weird. It's probably uh, The World's End, which is the third film in the Cornetto trilogy of Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg movies. It was Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and now the world's end. And I think that comes out in July where people speak English and it comes out in August here. But, uh, if that one doesn't count because it's not, you know, a huge movie, then in the back of my mind, I'm hoping Lone Ranger is really good. Oh yeah. That was the other one that I was trying to, I was trying to remember what it was and we saw the trailer for it. So I was just thinking, what trailers did we see today? Dang it. But yeah, Lone Ranger was one that I was, I mean, we talked about it several times, I think on the show, just about the massive budget that they had for it and uh, how they originally said, no, no, we're not going to do it because your budget is over the top and we can't do that. We'll never make that back. But we, if you knock $5 million off that budget, then we'll do it. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that that's pretty good. The Lone Ranger is kind of a cool... It's like he's the first superhero or something, you know? He's he's He's... Not a superhero, but he's the same kind of idea. He's like a regular guy. He puts on just the little domino mask, and now all of a sudden he's unrecognizable, and he's this... How did the thing go in the radio play? Like a something, or maybe that was the shadow. I don't the remember. speed of light with a hearty hi-ho silver, the Lone Ranger. There you go. So uh, I, I do hope that that turns out to be pretty cool. Uh, I'm excited for that one to come out. That's uh, 4th of July weekend, right? Oh, I don't know. If I remember right from that list that I was looking at today, but yeah, I, I think the or the world's end uh, counts just as much as anything else. Um, doesn't have to be a blockbuster. Sometimes blockbusters aren't expected to be blockbusters. I mean, this summer we also have we also have The Hangover Three, which The Hangover wasn't expected to be a blockbuster, but it turned out to just keep on selling and selling, and now they've remade it a couple of times. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to see the end of the trilogy that they've, they planned from all along, of course. 
Yes, that's right. It's so funny. It's like, see the final chapter in the epic Hangover trilogy. There's the army of dark wizards versus the good wizards. Who will prevail? The fate of Las Vegas hangs in the balance. <laughs> but yeah, so there's those. And yeah, there's some other ones that uh, look like they could be good. And I guess, you know, I don't know what we're going to wind up seeing and what we're not going to wind up seeing, but I'd be willing to, you know, do an episode on any show that we saw. But yeah, if you're, if there's something you want us to talk about, I think somebody mentioned uh, Oblivion, is it? Oblivion has come and went. That was... No, then it's oh, Elysi- Elysium. Elysium. Elysium, somebody mentioned they wanted to see that one and were really interested and hoped that it turned out and wanted us to do an episode on that, I think. See, that's not a movie that you want to release in the middle of the summer where just where all the teenage boys are going to see Fast and the Furious 6. Seems like that's one that can afford to wait until September or something when people are hungry for that sort of thing. I don't know, though. I mean, it, it, it does have Matt Damon in it, and that may be... I mean, it may be he's an enough of an action draw now that that is a potential blockbuster too possible in september i'm usually just hungry for more hamburgers it's just pretty much all i eat all right so iron man 3 you know for me it was just really really hard to not have elevated expectations for this reiterate for the folks at home your theory of sequels and then Apply it to Iron Man 3. Oh, okay. I'm assuming this is what you're talking about. My theory of sequels, it's basically based on the X-Men trilogy that uh, we had, where the first movie comes out, and there's going to be hype, depending on what it is. Sometimes there's not much hype because it's an unknown property, or sometimes there's lots of hype. But X-Men, it was just like, okay, well, yeah, we'll give it a shot. And then people went and saw it, and they liked it. And so they said, yeah, you should check this out. And depending on how good the first one is, you'll find opening weekend, the first week or so, that the sequel opens, that money that comes in is all based on how good the first one was. doesn't matter if the movie was absolutely horrible or whether it was good. People will not be checking reviews. They don't. Nobody goes to read the critics' reviews before they go to see a film. They just watch the commercial. They think, oh, that looks good, or no, that looks stupid. And then, you know, they make their choice accordingly. And so, yeah, my my theory of sequels is the next movie, its early grosses is based all on how good the last movie was. So with the X-Men, the first one was pretty good. So the second one had decent money in its early weeks, But the second one was really good, and so the third one you find in its early weeks had just a huge opening, and people didn't like it as much, and so the opening was a lot. It was like the vast majority of the money that it made, and then it kind of dropped off seriously from then. And a lot of movies do that anyways, but movies that are really good will tend to, they'll drop off, but then they'll keep going and going, and and sometimes they even build again. And uh, that's when you get the movie that makes like tons of money, like an Avatar or a Titanic or the Dark Knight or whatever. So that's your theory. And then along comes Iron Man 3. And how does that fit into your theory? Uh, I don't know how it's making its money, but I would say Iron Man 1 was very, very well received. Everybody thought it was amazing, very good. It made a lot of money. And when Iron Man 2 came out, it had a really big opening. But it wasn't well received, especially not on the same level as the first one. People were not as impressed by it. They didn't like it. It didn't do it for them like the first one did. And so I think it had a, a fairly high drop-off. I don't know. Did it? I don't. Am I just spouting farts out of my butt instead of talking? It made like a million dollars less than Iron Man 1. But yeah, its opening was so huge. Um, you know, it's kind of like X Men Three. It just it was really front loaded. Tons of people went and saw it when they first when it first came out, and then it dropped off. But enough people had seen it when it first came out that it was still a big hit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And so yeah, what should happen with this one is that it should definitely not have as big of an opening as the last one did. I don't know if it's going to because uh, today's opening day at least in 
the United States. And so, yeah, it's hard to say whether that holds true, but it does seem like a lot of people are still really excited about it. They're willing to forgive Iron Man 2 and still give Iron Man 3. But I think what you're probably going to miss is the people that don't just go and see every superhero movie. The people that judge them based on, you know, oh, yeah, I saw that last one and that was bad. I, yeah, we'll probably just skip this one. I, Iron Man 1 was all right. But that second one wasn't very good. So, you know, I, I don't need to see that one. People like my dad or something who would go see a movie, but yeah, they might just skip this one because the last one was kind of dumb or something like that. Oh, see, I disagree with you completely. <laughs> I think that people are seeing this as not a sequel to Iron Man 2, but as a sequel to The Avengers. Oh, okay. I can, I can see that. And hence, it's opened so huge beyond the level that, I mean, you know, this is like a Harry Potter 7 or 8 opening that's what people are predicting. I, mean, I don't really know. But in other countries where it's already opened, it opened as big as The Avengers, way bigger than Iron Man 2. You know, I mean, it was a follow up to a movie that people loved with a character that they loved in Avengers. OK, yeah, I guess I can see that. I, I, I forgot to consider The Avengers as part of that. I wonder then how Thor and Captain America and the others will be seen as well. Will they be considered sequels as well? Or Yeah, that, that that's a weird kind of a... It's a Scorpion King-esque family tree now. Yeah, see, I was about to say it's unprecedented. But even the Scorpion King yeah, is, is not comparable to, to the Avengers thing. And yeah, I think Thor 2 will open really, really big because people will see it as a continuation of Avengers. And I, I don't know, it'll be a whole nother year before Captain America 2 comes out. And so maybe some of the goodwill of Avengers will have worn off by then. But maybe not, because there were a lot of people who probably didn't see Captain America 1, but saw Avengers and now love the character. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I think Captain America and Thor, for a lot of people, they saw them for the first time in the Avengers films and... Yeah, it seemed like when the Thor trailer came on that there was a lot more buzz from the audience than you would have probably expected to have gotten otherwise if he hadn't been in the Avengers. If the Avengers was separate from Thor, if he was like Spider-Man or something, you know, a Marvel character, but not in Avengers, you know, people wouldn't have been like, oh, oh yeah, Thor, oh, sweet. Oh, there's this flowing locks again. Oh, I love the hammer. See, yeah, I I sort of soured on Thor, the movie, since it came out. But I got really excited to see that Thor trailer tonight. And uh, I'm going to be there opening night. And I probably would have anyway, because I've been to all of these opening night because I'm a Marvel fan, you know. But it is really just amazing to see other people embrace the the, the shared universe thing and, and... how special that is for the the Marvel Studios films. Yeah, and Thor, I think, also has the added advantage of having Loki as well as the character who was the uh, big baddie from uh, Avengers. So that, I think, will definitely play into its favor instead of like Iron Man, where it's just Iron Man. And I guess there was... Pepper was in the movie. I don't know if people are showing up for that. Although... Gwyneth Paltrow was named the most beautiful woman in the world prior to Iron Man coming out. I don't know how much the buzz from Iron Man had to do with that or what, but... It had to have had something to do with it. Because I I saw that. That was just last week that I was on the cover, I think, of People magazine. And I was just like, I like Gwyneth. I, I really, really like Gwyneth Paltrow. But she's not even the most beautiful woman in the Iron Man films. And so I just thought, well, wait, where, who decided this? Wait, what? Uh, but, but that's okay. I mean, I like her. I'm good for her. And plus, she's not 20 years old, too. For somebody to say that she's the most beautiful woman in the world, you know, that's got to be encouraging to women everywhere. That, you know, we've got a 40-year-old or however old Gwyneth is on the cover of a glamour, well, on the cover of a magazine, you know, devoted to beautiful people. Yeah, it's the people's annual most beautiful people issue and uh, apparently she took the top spot this time around but yeah I I don't know that Gwyneth Paltrow had very much to do 
in the uh, Avengers movie to where you could say that she was any kind of a draw, but I think Loki definitely could be. When you see him in that trailer and you're like, oh, there he is, and he looks like Gene Simmons. <laughs> uh, I liked it. I was excited. I, I got all geeked up when when you see him for some reason. I guess from the Thor movie, there was he was only so-so, but once uh, the Avengers hits, then all of a sudden he's risen several levels to uh, something much more interesting. Well, he's had as much screen time as Thor, you know, in Marvel's films. And I, I don't know how many of the people in the crowd today knew. Uh, well, how, I don't know how many knew there was a Thor 2 coming. But uh, of those people, how many of them knew Loki was coming back? Because they save him for the very end of the trailer so that you he's out of sight, out of mind. You know, you, you hear Anthony Hopkins voice and all that and you see lots of Natalie Portman and, and that, but they wait until the very end to show you that Loki is still alive. And, and he looks so different to me that I wonder, well, how many people in the audience know that that's Loki? I, 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 I Maybe I'm really underestimating movie fans, people that, that love these movies enough to go on opening night. Yeah, I think you're underestimating. Mean, once he just does that smile, then you're like, oh, it's it's interesting look that he has and it's just like it seems sinister without even trying or something you know what i mean i don't know what it is definitely a very well cast actor he's uh does a great job as loki so yeah i i guess iron man does count as a sequel to the avengers and when it comes down to it it was i mean he talks over and over again about the events that happened in new york and the wormhole and the blah, blah. And he has sort of a post-traumatic stress disorder thing going on involved with that whole experience. I don't know. What do you have to say about uh, Iron Man? We, we've talked for many minutes. Let me see here. 32 minutes now, which I, I suppose we've edited some of that out, but it'll be close to that. And we still haven't gotten to the film yet. Well, we try not to be too spoilerific, or, or do we? Because, yeah, we want to talk about the ending and we want to talk about, oh, I didn't like it when this happened. And, oh, I loved the line where the Hulk did this. And and so, yeah, obviously we should have a spoiler warning at the beginning of this conversation. But let me preface, though, by saying that because my expectations were so high coming off of Avengers, Iron Man had a rough row to hoe. Is that is that the saying? Yes, row to hoe. A tough row or rough row to hoe. And because I am so anti-Man of Steel, I have a feeling that that one's going to be really easy for me to enjoy. Unless I go into it with little fists at my waist and saying, I don't want to like you. I'm going to find reasons not to like you. Hans Zimmer is no John Williams. F you. Which I'm already feeling. But anyhow, so I, I had high expectations you know i feel like robert downey jr as iron man is one of the very strongest elements in all of these movies even including like the other ones that marvel studios doesn't make you know i've I've always felt like tony stark is better cast than batman or 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 a vast majority of these characters i mean maybe hugh jackman is wolverine in the way that uh robert downey jr is tony stark yeah, I would say Hugh Jackman is probably the, the one other one that's just super iconic. And he's gotten more chances at it, perhaps, than anyone else, which probably cements it a little bit more. But I think, yeah, from the very beginning, he pretty much owned that uh, role. The only problem is that he's not a tiny little short dude like <laughs> they want him to be in the comics. But... You know, but yeah, I, I definitely agree with you, uh, Robert Downey Jr. He is Iron Man so much that the cartoon that they do of Iron Man and the Avengers and stuff, they've got a guy, it's not Robert Downey Jr., but he's doing a Robert Downey Jr. impression when he does the voice of Tony Stark. It's obviously he's trying to sound like Robert Downey Jr. because now that is Iron Man. And I think when... You know, you were saying uh, a couple of weeks ago when we talked that he got an injury at one point in this film. And since then, he's thinking, oh, maybe I'm too old and I'll have to retire here soon. And when they have to recast Tony Stark, I think that will be one that will be really hard to, to pull off. You know, they can do, you know, a new Spider-Man or a new 
whatever various characters that they they do you know again and again you know a new hulk they've got a new hulk for every film you know they can get away with that but uh i think they'll have a hard time pulling in they'll have, i think they have the same hard time when it finally comes time to recast the wolverine as well yeah i mean that's a whole other barrel of monkeys let's talk about wolverine when the wolverine comes out just if if we end up going to see that together we can talk about that but we could talk about it even if we see it separately. Okay, that's a good deal. The thing that I want to keep in mind is that these are characters, most of them are now 50 years old. You know, Captain America's 70-something years old. Superman, Batman are 75 years old. They're bigger than anybody who plays them. And so the time will come when it's no longer Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. And yeah, it will be tough to accept anybody else. But do not stop making Iron Man movies just because Robert Downey Jr. doesn't want to do them anymore. This is me talking to the fates or whatever, because no no Marvel executives are listening to this. Yeah, is Robert Downey Jr. is wonderful, but the character is bigger than any any actor or whatever. You know, I feel like a hypocrite saying that because they show Henry Cavill in that Man of Steel trailer and it's like, uh-huh. Yeah, you're no Chris Reeve. Ugh. I'm just contradicting myself. But uh, it's just, I'm sure there are actors out there that are 20 years old or 30 years old or however old you have to be to be Iron Man in the next movie that would be wonderful, that would be perfect, that would bring new aspects to it or would also have things that reminded you of Robert Downey Jr. That, But they would be perfect I don't know. I'm trying to think of a sports metaphor, but when you pass the ball to somebody else and he continues the play, you hand the ball off. Yeah. Well, they would be whatever that sports person that does that is. And it's the, it's the running back. We got to understand that Robert Downey Jr. was not a kid when he got this part. And apparently he's got enough money. I, I wouldn't have thought that was possible for anyone. If he doesn't want to do them anymore, you know, I, I feel bad. But keep making Iron Man movies. Yeah, the good thing is, I think because it is Marvel Studios, that's what they do. You know, they're Marvel Studios. They're going to make Marvel films. And I really don't think we have to worry about Iron Man going away, even if Robert Downey Jr. decides to call it quits. I think the real problem that you have with Superman and you see Henry Cavill and you're like, eh, you're not Chris Reeve is that Warner Brothers did exactly what you're talking about them. You know, you were saying, don't do this. Basically, you're saying, don't do what Warner Brothers did with Superman and let it fall away and be gone for 15, 20 years. Instead, keep making them. Because, you know, you wouldn't say, oh, you're no Chris Reeves if we already had 10 Superman movies since those ones ended. You'd be like, you're no Jim Flim Flam or whoever played him next. You know, there wouldn't be that problem because there had been several Supermen that didn't have Reeves in their name. Yeah, and and maybe he will be Superman. He because uh, they hired a basically an unknown in Henry Cavill, which is always a great thing to do. I mean, as terrible as Hugh Jackman's name is, he is Wolverine. The second you see him there, because we'd never seen him in anything before. And so if you go out and you find somebody that's right for the part and just say, hey, this is this is the new Green Lantern or whatever, I just it's easier than when they have a whole lot of baggage. And 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 I'm contradicting myself because Robert Downey Jr. had been around for 20 something years. If anybody has baggage, it's Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> but they weren't casting a teen idol type of character. They were casting somebody who had a history. And dude, in this day and age it seems like a miracle that they cast a 40 year old or however old he was in the lead in this thing but i think that that's part of marvel studios autonomy was that they're like well if we were making this for another studio yeah they would insist on somebody that's 28 years old or 22 years old or whatever the deal is but we feel like he's right for the part and yeah Robert Downey Jr. brought sort of a smart, smart aleckness and then also a darkness to the part 
that were inherent in his personality. And, you know, I don't know Iron Man as well as I know some of these other Marvel characters. So it's possible that that it's not a totally accurate comic interpretation of the character. But uh, that's okay. You know, in the next one, maybe they'll have a different take on it. And, and that's the neat thing about these characters that are effectively immortal is that somebody's like, well, you know what? I'm not going to have the next one be a ladies' man. I'm going to have uh, the next one be a loner. And he, 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 he can't be with anybody else. He pushes everybody away. And, and there's an aspect to that in this one. But you know what I mean? It's just like whatever they focus on, whatever this new actor brings to the table. Did you notice that there was absolutely no alcohol in this one except for in the flashbacks? I mean, that's just a huge part of the comic book Tony Stark is huge drunk. You know what I mean? And in this one, you know, he even turned down a, a beer when the Mandarin offered him one. Since it's such a family film, maybe that's one of those things that they're just trying to avoid. And, you know, we're not going to let the hero be a drunk. We're going to leave that out or whatever. But yeah, this uh, this movie was was interesting. I don't know. We don't want to spoil stuff. No, we are going to spoil But I guess we're going to. Ben Kingsley was was interesting, huh? Oh boy, I I I was I guess I was disappointed by that because they had kept that aspect of his personality a secret to the point where I assumed and I'll bet everybody else assumed he's the big bad in this movie. He is the the arch villain and Guy Pierce's character is just like a henchman or is uh, you know an industrial competitor the same way that Sam Rockwell's character was in Iron Man 2. And so yeah, they just pulled the rug out from under us, but uh I mean I I got to hand it to him it was very clever the way they did that. I didn't have any I didn't I didn't see it coming at all. Yeah, I definitely didn't see that coming at all either. I don't know, yeah, it's interesting because the Mandarin is his arch enemy. And I got the feeling, you know, because, I mean, they dropped this guy, the Guy Pierce, off of, you know, the building. And they blew him up and et cetera, et cetera. And he kept just regenerating. So I get the feeling, although they he seems to have been dead or something at the end of the film, I don't think he really is. I get the feeling that we'll see him again. I expected to see some kind of bit at the end instead of what we did see after the credits. I expected to see some kind of bit where you see his... A la the end of Master of the Universe. Oh, uh, I guess you could say Master of the Universe. I was going to say X Men Origins Wolverine, where one of the several different endings that you can get, you have Deadpool. You know, turns out he's not dead. He's he's still ready to go and do stuff. And he says shh or something like that. I thought we'd get something like that with Mandarin, you know, coming back out. Or or, or like the monkey at the end of uh, Pirates. <laughs> Pirates. Yeah, I, you know, I, I love the Codas. I love that they... I've, well, I've, I've always sat through the credits anyway. But I understand that it can be a chore and that, you know, it is like reading for some people. And, and, oh, you know, I would hate to force that on somebody. But giving a little reward for the people who stay through the credits is is neat and it's fun to see what they choose to do because some of them are teases for what's the next movie and some of them are just jokes like this one but it was neat to see uh mark ruffalo back because you know i don't think we'll be seeing hulk again for two more years yeah i wonder when they'll finally decide that the waters is safe to go with another hulk if it'll be uh you know after an Avengers 2 and they're like, okay, people like Hulk enough. Or if they're just going to leave Hulk in Avengers only kind of a thing. He doesn't get his own book. But it would be cool to see Hulk again. I'm not a huge Hulk fan, but I'd go see the film anyways. That's, I guess uh, I, I see them all when it comes down to the superhero. Or at least the major superhero films. I'm trying to think of what to talk about with it. Uh, did you enjoy the bits with the kid? I did. I thought that that was kind of fresh. It was neat. I guess it was probably trying to show us a fuzzier side to Tony, but he's so irascible and smart assy even to the kid that I, I found that that was pretty fun. I, I don't know that we'd seen kids before. There, there was a kid earlier that said, what was the deal with the wormhole or something like that? And then Tony started to freak out and... I was bugged by that because I was like, yeah, what was the deal with the, Hey, wait, 
Wait, answer the question. This kid's got a good point. The uh, reminding you of what happened in Avengers, but never using the A word was amusing to me also. Just that, you know, how much do we depend on this audience having seen the Avengers? Because everybody did. But you don't want to use it as a crutch. Oh, gosh, sorry. Let me complain for a second. They could have had a, a line explaining where the other FN Avengers were when, you know, the president is, is going to be executed on live TV and all this bullshit with, you know, the, the it was not that the world was coming to an end, but it was big enough that if you got a world full of superheroes, you might wonder where some of them are. It's not just Iron Man. Yeah, that probably would have been a good idea because, you know, they say, oh, yeah, he's up there with the Iron Patriot. But what about the actual Patriot, Captain America? Where is he? Why is he not hanging out and helping? He should have been first in line to stand up and protect the president. I mean, I know that you can't do these things, but at least have a line about it because I felt like Iron Man had to do everything himself or it wouldn't get done. Which is fine if you're John McClane, but if you're whatever character Bruce Willis played in G.I. Joe 2, you got a whole team. So it's not just you, Bruce Willis, that, you know, has to save the day. And, 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 and it's, it's a very small complaint. I just thought it would have been neat to have him say, hey, you know, I, there's no way to contact Thor. He doesn't live here. Or, you know, it's like, I, S.H.I.E.L.D. is offline. I can't get any of those guys on the phone let alone out here to help me take these guys down. I got to do it myself. Yeah, that probably would have been a good idea. I mean, it's like the the throwaway lines that you had here and there where like Thor is back on Earth and they're like, oh, yes, we've got uh, Natalie Portman. She's in a secure, safe location. We're not going to see her in this film, but, uh, you know, she's safe. So we don't need to worry about that. And didn't did you have a problem with that last year? It seems like I remember you mentioning that like, oh, yeah, well, Natalie Portman's not in this movie, but we're going to mention her anyway. I thought it was great. No, I didn't have a problem with it. I thought, I just thought it was kind of funny. You know, when you see that line, you're like, oh, yes, that's what it made me think of. You hear that line and it's like, and also, sir, not appearing in this film, did this. It was one of those things like they could have just had a little sign that says, Natalie Portman will not be appearing. They just hand him a note. He looks at it and it says, Natalie Portman will not be appearing in this film. And he goes, oh, okay, thanks. You know, it's basically what they did, but it works. I mean, because you're going to wonder why that, where, you know, he's back. He's on Earth. He said he was going to come back and see her, but he didn't. Oh, no, they got to deal with that in Thor 2 with her saying, hey, you were here fighting snake robot monsters and all that. You know, you could have stuck around a little while, made out with me, took your shirt off again. Did that slip your mind? I must not be that important to you then. And. He's just like, oh, but my brother, he was up to his Asgardian shenanigans. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens with that. See if they deal with it more. But yeah, that probably would have been uh, something they should have done in this film. I, that's just me. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how long we've been talking. I didn't love the film at all. I know that I gave iron man 2 a pretty good review and said yeah i thought that was a good follow-up to iron man it wasn't as good as iron man but it wasn't terrible with each time i revisit iron man 2 i its flaws become more and more visible to me and you know it's got to the point where it's like i think that's the weakest of the marvel films but dude i don't know if i liked iron man 3 better than iron man 2 hmm, that's interesting from what i remember you didn't give iron man 2 that positive of a review oh okay you, i think you said something along the lines of i don't think i like that movie very much kind of like you just did with this one and i was i think less critical of it if i remember right i don't know and i i think i'm the same as with this one i was i was entertained there was a lot of funny moments and stuff it uh, it worked for me it wasn't like the greatest thing ever but it wasn't terrible either the the bad guys in this were interesting you know they had the, the glowing hotness and the melting stuff and the always regenerating and so forth which makes them i don't know i mean I, I wonder if any of them are dead you know they come flying in with all these iron man suits and they beat them all up and they fight and they're fighting back and they killed the mandarin like three or four times is he really dead or is he not Killian. well right yeah killian who 
I guess, isn't the Mandarin, but he does at one point say, all right, masks off, I am the Mandarin. Okay. So suck it or something. It makes me think that like none of those people are actually dead unless they actually explode, I guess. They do sometimes do that where they just explode. And once that happens, I guess, then they're really dead. But uh, I, otherwise they keep regenerating. I really liked visually those glowing people. I mean, they were intimidating and, and pretty scary. And of course, they had the spooky eyes and stuff. And that was something that uh, probably because it's expensive, we haven't seen much of, of the lighting up from the inside and, and stuff like that. So, I, yeah, I thought that that was neat. That gets my goat. We'll be continued next time. Good. Run while you still can. Hey, that ain't funny, man. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Big and rich a national treasure, man!